Hey, what's up? <coughs> oh, nobody can right. hear me. I've just uh, turned the microphone on. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Summer Championships, uh, the round of quarterfinals, the round of round of eight, I believe. I'm joined by Samwise12. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Absolutely. Uh, we are here ready. The game is about to start. And we had a few difficulties, as I mentioned before, obviously ESO being down. We all frantically had to download a different client and... Uh, we, as you can see, are using Game Rager and have some pretty high-level home cities. Yeah, some, some, I just topped you. Yeah, you did. That's pretty good. Mine is still over 9,000, though, so it shouldn't matter. This is my favorite. <laughs> Leet. <laughs> oh, that is wonderful. So basically, guys, if you're like, what the, what the hell is this? Uh, we, we're using Game Ranger, and you can edit your game files so your single-player home cities are massively, uh, ridiculously high-level. Uh, you can go above 131 like crazy. You can also... Uh, Edit your own decks. You have to, that's that's why we edited the home city levels. Actually, Blackstar and Mu and Musky Jr. Uh, having to having to download this, <laughs> edit game files so they could have uh, high level home cities and uh, buy all the cards they need for for the decks that they want to use in their tournament games. Yeah, well, uh, that's what Musket's doing, isn't he? He's just changing his deck. Yeah, right now he is making decks because <laughs> 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 he had to make like you know it's a best of seven, so they have to play at least. Uh, well, I don't know, say five sieves or something like that. They will have to have five sieves available to them, uh, all with decks that are competent. Um, so, yeah, Blackstar and Musket are going to have to work from memory here for what, what cards they would normally put in their decks. Easy to miss one, don't you think? Yeah, it, it can be easy to miss one, yeah. So, I've um, done it before. Musket Jr. has arrived by the looks of it. It uh, looks like he's... he's Plan is the Germans versus India, though he's only just joined. He's you know could be changing that civilization any moment now. Uh, the first map is going to be Baja California, aka Gaia California, Gaha <laughs> Ga Gaia California. Nice. I know. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised to see Blackstar play India on this map. It's a pretty good India map. Mm. I was, I'd probably expect him to play either India or Japan here. Yeah. Very choky, right? Uh, I don't know why there is a. Uh, I'm going to get rid of me, me and my beard. I wish that I didn't realize there was a camera on, otherwise I'd, I'd have it set up so I wasn't actually quite this high up and cut off by the camera. But uh, <laughs> we'll get rid of that. No need for that right now. <laughs> oh dear, Blackstar. This is, we cobbled this together. <laughs> oh dear. Um... Oh, interesting. Mm hmm. I think Musket will be happy with this, to be honest. He's clicking in. Or well, Blackstar's in, yeah. One second. Hopefully. Okay, that's good. Just turn it on my scoreboard. Okay. <laughs> Alright. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Summer Championships quarterfinals. This is a best of seven series between Blackstar OP and Musket Jr. The winner of this set will progress to the to the, to the the semi-finals, and the loser will be eliminated. Both players have come a long way to get this far, uh, taking out some notable opponents. Uh, but Blackstar, we'll start with him in the color red, spawning, spawning somewhere, spawning on the left-hand side of the map uh, today as Germany. Uh, Blackstar, notably the winner of the previous tournament, and uh, currently, arguably, the best player in Age of Empires 3, currently. Mm -hmm. If you go by winning a tournament as, as making you the best. Certainly has that, that accolade on the, on, yeah. as, as an accolade that, you know, has achieved. He definitely holds the right to best player right now, that's for sure. If he wants to, to take that, absolutely. So we'll have to see, uh, see, what, he, see, what, uh, see what Musket has in store for us. Musket, uh, certainly a well-versed player, has been around since the beginning, since the uh, glory days of Vanilla. Is it? Uh, it's not lagging for you, is it? I'm not sure. It looks a little laggy. I 
think uh, yeah, he's going to lower his graphics settings quickly. All right. Oh, yeah, he was mentioning before the game started that he had... Um, yeah, he said he had some graphics problems. Graphic card issues. Uh, I'm just checking my... There's no... Like, sometimes I'm playing a stream in the background by mistake. My processor yeah. says I'm not doing that, so that's good. So it's... Uh, yeah, 50, 60 percent is absolutely fine for this. It doesn't... It looks like sort of FPS lag, like... Yeah, it does. It looks... It doesn't look like command lag, that's for sure. No. I'm not quite sure what's going on with that. That's... Hopefully Blackstar's uh, computer can can hold out. But yeah, Musket Jr. been around since the sort of the glory days, as I mentioned, since the early beginning of Age of Empires. And uh, played Vanilla for a very long time, so we will certainly be good with Germany, among other civilizations. And came over to Tad, uh, not, well, not recently, but he certainly, you know, played a lot of Tad, and he's certainly very good at that as well. Uh, didn't get very far in the previous tournament, but I think his attitude in the previous tournament uh, was not the same as it is here. Uh, in this tournament here, I think he's, he's looking to go all the way, whereas in the previous one... I think he was rather frustrated, perhaps trolling around, uh, so I would disagree with his t previous tournament performance. Uh, but both players playing as India, uh, sorry, as Germany with a 200 wood star, and uh, Black Star has elected to lay down a trading post, whereas Musket Junior has not done that. Uh, it looks like he's got the 200 wood ready. He's, you think he's walking towards it? Mm. Oh, I don't. I just think he hasn't scouted it yet. All oh, right, he's got his 80 wood there as well. By the way. Interesting. I'm surprised. Oh no, sorry, he's I, I, I lied. He's gone for a mark, yeah. Oh wow, okay. Uh, does this tell us he has perhaps not a fortress agenda in mind? What's the market for, you know, a stronger sort of mass age to uh, perhaps is going to go for, you know, some sort of Doppelsodner composition that you sometimes see in German mirrors? It's quite interesting because that's, I mean, if he, if he was going to go market, he should have been dropping that a lot earlier. Mm. Um, and he still is three coins short of hunting dogs. Curious. Let's take a look at the queue. I think he got. Well, I don't know if you noticed, but he was walking up to this top trading post, um, and then Blackstar had just started building it when he got there. So I think that made him go for a market instead. Oh, I didn't notice that. Maybe, maybe you get there and you think, "Oh God, I'm going to miss the first batch. Maybe it's not worth doing, or perhaps less worth doing." Maybe you just switch to the market uh, because of that, and then do something where you know market is strong in age two, uh, possibly. Yeah, I mean, he d he did. P he's picked up 140 wood as well. So a lot of wood, yeah. 80 wood as a treasure and another 60 wood. Holy yep. crap, that is a lot of wood. Uh, um, oh, I'm hoping he'll go for the TP in transition. Um, I think Germany definitely need a, tra a TP fairly early. Yeah, I, it's certainly a good time to get it right. Um, a lot, I mean, Blackstar likely to be laying down a market during transition. Yeah, exactly. uh, just both players will be getting those two buildings just at different times and arguably perhaps trading post is better early on. But perhaps that difference is marginal. We'll to see, you see what Musket Jr. has in store, and perhaps it'll explain uh, the order of which he's done it. But Blackstar, uh, now clicking up to the next stage, will be switching all of his villages over to wood. No doubt will be laying down a market and gathering the required resources for, of course, the upgrades he would like. And uh, Musket Jr., now doing the same, has just clicked up. But Blackstar is slightly ahead of him in this mirror at the moment. He is, he's getting very, his explorer is very low here as well. So I'm 14 HP. Mm. <laughs> Tank him with his scout there, and pick himself yeah. up 150 coin. It's pretty good. That's just a lot of coin. Yeah, he's definitely got a treasure lead, that's for sure. <clears throat> and, uh, I mean, Black Star's picked up 75 food. Other than that, it's not a lot. Just a few little coin treasures. Mm, that's not hugely influential. Uh, Black Star saying his graphics card is, is not, not performing. Uh, this isn't too good. This is hopefully it will hold out. Hopefully it will hold out and the game will be uh, okay. But uh, uh, I am really not a fan of, of lag. Uh, fortunately, though, uh, it looks like it seems to be going okay here. So, <coughs> did you see what just happened there? The both explorers just walked right past each other. <laughs> that could have denied the trading post for musket. That would have been massive. Oh wow. So yeah, look, Black Star's got his market up. He's researching placer mines first. Well, uh, musket. Has already taken Gangsaw and now is getting placed for mines as well, as well as his TP. Yeah, and I guess that's you know a result of having his uh, trip market down a bit earlier. Can get those upgrades here. Yeah. But the question is, who is you know sort of ahead? If I turn this, the timer off, we can see here Blackstar has a shipment ready and is 72, 75 percent away into his next one. Whereas Musket, you know, has has now got his shipment available, but you can see he's on twenty percent, or his opponent's on eighty. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Blackstar is you know a, a, a huge amount up in terms of. Uh, of, of, of XP, and that means you know his, his first shipments in Colonia are gonna arrive sooner. If he wants to go up to Fortress, it's gonna be you know that much quicker and make him that much more competitive. And as I've mentioned in previous previous games, when you have like 
you know, 40 seconds or 30 seconds or so, like an entire shipment worth of time ahead of your opponent, like in a fight yeah. where they don't have that shipment, can be can be very game-changing. Forward barracks from musket, though. Yep, so forward barracks from musket, whereas it's a stable start for uh, black star. Mm. Um, and you, black, uh, musket's going to be extremely open to raids. With He's got a few vills quite far out and no real protection. It's a long way for his units to travel back to defend. That is true. Uh, he's definitely... Uh, gonna find it tough to to yeah. Though fortunately he's he's got a couple more deer a bit closer, so he can and he's got those two berry bushes. But yeah, yep. these, this is they are quite exposed right now. And of course, cavalry have just arrived from that uh, three villager shipment. They're gonna make their way over, see if he can get any villager kills. But uh, let's take a look at the uh, queue. Here we see doppel soldiers, doppel soldiers. Uh, you know what I mean? In in queue at the barracks here. And yep. uh, this is this is you know you'd think oh. making doppel soldiers versus an opponent who's starting cavalry. It sounds pretty good, right? Yep, sounds pretty good, but as I said, they're quite slow units, so he's going to really struggle to hold against these raids. Mm. Uh, he's now dropping a stable in his base. Do you think? Oh, oh dear. Oh, there's a... Uh, there's Cav... Uh, are they going to get... They're going to get it. No, nope. not okay. quite. All right. Does manage to save his uh, settler wagon there. Blackstar not playing too greedy, but does have two Cav nearby. Does manage to slow them down, but uh, Blackstar uh, separating up these Cav and uh, does, not by the looks of it, manage to get away. Only loses, well, actually loses two Alon, so nice, nice job from Musket there, but uh, not a massive loss, really, for Blackstar. Yeah. Yeah, but still, cavalry. still fine. He's still got, like, yeah, he's got another two Cav in his base coming. Yeah, so these cab not going to be able to do anything. Oh no, the low HP settler wagons coming by. Oh, where is it? <laughs> it's down oh, by the mine. <laughs> no, it oh, looks yeah. like, he looks like he's held this fine. Yeah, looks like this, this is good for him. So let's see, Black Star has also dropped to barracks now and also has doppels in queue. I think this uh, this start just favours him quite quite a lot. And with the extra XP. Yeah, the extra XP, and he's had his three vills out for an for an, a minute ahead of him. Yeah, that's quite a long time. Uh, he must uh, get electing to send seven hundred wood. As his yep. first shipment there, um, just all extra shipments aside from the XP, having your villagers out uh, because of that shipment order. Yes, the Black Star gonna have a slight advantage. Plus that 150 coin he found, uh, it's like an extra couple of of the wealth. Uh, that that was uh, that was musket. Oh, was it musket? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, perhaps that'll offset the difference, but only by a little bit. I uh, do see more raids coming in from Black Star. Uh, low HP villager has been is exposed. Oh dear. Oh dear, I don't think he's noticed this no, raid in his base. He hasn't. This could be really bad. Oh dear, but in the meantime, whilst there's, uh, you know, oh god, there's so many villages there, but we do have sort of a skirmish back in uh, Blackstar's base. Oh. oh, it's so close. He doesn't want to get caught if he gets <laughs> caught! Alright, yeah. pause micro incoming. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, so if he gets caught here, what, what is like, I mean that one doppel he could send back, right? But you know, he doesn't yeah. really want to do that, it's 200 resources. It's not right. going to catch all of them, so it's not going to be that bad, but uh, certainly. I can't change the, the key. I can't change the tab as well, no, it's paused. I was. I was thinking of unpausing it and then pausing it real quick again, but I'm not going to do that. Um, so the min Minutemen have just come out at Musket's TC just to fend off these uh, Ulans. Mm. I was gonna, I, I was qu gonna question this uh, stable placement earlier. Like it's completely blocking out his mine. It is. It's not the best. No, but sometimes you just want to slam, uh, yeah, slam yeah, your building he, down. Yeah, I think he just threw it down in a rush. And you're just like, God, I need this up. Let's yeah. get this down. Throw it there whilst the villagers are nearby. Yeah. So this is gonna look really bad for Musket here. He's outmassed in the doffel, in the doffels. Um, but uh, Blackstar did just get hit, so his, this is where his XP lead came into play. He's got his third third card in H2 out miles before. Like, he's had it out a long time now. Yeah, and as Whereas, a result... Yeah. As and as a, a result, result, he's outmassed him in the doppel fight. So. That's it, that's it. Four doppels here. One's going to have to, you know, just be executed and sent back here. Uh, it looks like he got a batch of five out. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, plus three from the shipment here, and that just puts him so far ahead for, you know, those that extra, what are we talking about, say 20, 30 seconds, that yep. Musket won't have that shipment available to him, or perhaps longer. So you can see currently Blackstar on 99%, about to get his next shipment, whereas Musket on 35, you know, that's a lot of XP. Yeah, Obviously, I'm wondering, I'm wondering if, I mean, Musket must have a card on the way, I imagine. Yeah, might do. Yeah, that would make sense. He can't be that far behind. No, he can't be two shipments behind, that's crazy. But until it arrives, he's not going to be able to catch back up, by which time, you know, Blackstar going to be well on his way for, to receiving his next shipment. Might not, you know, might not be as 
influential that one afterwards because you know 700 coin on the floor you still have to gather it up and then collect it but you know his point still stands and also as the game gets um longer and longer the gap between shipments gets bigger and bigger so it'll be less uh, likely as well plus your economies get bigger so shipments become worth less anyway uh, so we'll see but you know certainly a, a decent advantage ready? here and something we've analyzed a whole lot because there's nothing Are else to ready? talk about yeah. yes so um what i'd be expecting here is uh Black Sun knows he's got a big advantage here. It looks like he's going to pick up. He's just going to pick up one more doppel. Yeah, as expected. But, I mean, he, he's going to be able to take that, that barracks down. Mm. Uh, and I would expect him to age off the back of that. Yeah, and then get up into a nice favorable position here. We'll take a look what Musket has. He's one in queue. And, uh, you know, three doppels nearby. I think if you're a Musket at this point, even if you do pop five doppels, you're still outnumbered. Uh, it looks like he's going to do that, though, bringing these three in here. Has two in queue right now. Probably going to pop out five, but uh, Blackstar has five in queue as well. They're going to be joining shortly. Oh, look! What do you do here? Do you, do you take out those three, or do you I focus would, down the I racks? Would take it, I would take the racks down in that position. Yeah. Because yeah. now you guarantee that no five doppels are going to pop out there, and, you know, then it's a fairly even fight. Uh, but here, you know, if you kill that, then then these three are on the run, and you, you take out your opponent's barracks there. If he popped them out, perhaps a moment sooner, we have no idea how like how much train there were. The UI doesn't tell us that. We just know how many were in queue. It doesn't get them out though, and the barracks does go down as a result of this. Black Star in a very favorable position. Going to be quite happy with himself. 700 coin does come down, and I expect, as you mentioned, he'll be using that to wage up off the back of this. So he's got about what he's got about 13 doppels on the field right now. Let's take a look at the military tab. Yeah, 12 uh, compared 12, to 6, yeah. and his opponent does have, you know, 3 extra cav, but uh, when your armies are, when we're talking about double soldiers, that's not hugely relevant, uh, unless they are, you know, able to raid, but... Uh... Yeah, so must get this, uh, sorry, Black Star is definitely saving up the resources to age here, um, and I, I, it's going to be hard for Musket to come back from this position. Mm. He's 10 villas down Holy as well. crap, how did that happen? I guess it was the raiding that we were yeah. sort of It was It was that coin mine raid, he took out about three settler wagons. Three settler, yeah. Six villages, plus two villages that maybe were yeah. there, I'm not sure. Not sure how much uh, work the Minutemen did there. Takes out a house with a cheeky uh, siege and that down. Though here, gonna have to take this fight. Looks like though... I was gonna say with the Minutemen added in, he's got, a, he's got a good advantage here, and actually that is the case. Was that yeah, Minutemen do very well against uh, against heavy infantry. Was that perhaps a little bit greedy taking out that house? I mean, it was uh, certainly certainly yeah. good, but he did get punished for it. It was definitely unnecessary. He could have just walked back and contained him, basically. Mm. Obviously, when you're aging up, you don't really want to be that far forward because you're not making military units. Your opponent is therefore most likely going to outmass you. Uh, for the time being, at least, until you get up to the next stage, get the shipments out, and then can sort of catch up. Uh, Musket now knows he has, you know, quite the advantage in the military department. Look at that, 34 villages compared to, sorry, military units compared to 6 is now going to come forward. Most likely will be able to take out that house, and sees his opponent has just hit up. Is going to be feeling pretty good about attacking right now, uh, though. Is, at the same time, going to feel pretty sad that his opponent has managed to find himself in, in the next age where, you know, his, his doppel soldiers are, and all of the units he has access to are just going to be hard countered by, you know, the sort of the, the units that are available in the Fortress Age. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yes. Looks like his PC's crashed. Mm, that is, uh... Oh dear, Blackstar! <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh dear. Interesting. I, mean, I haven't heard of him having these problems before. No, well, they're unexpected, aren't they? Like, that happens. Uh, when your graph, like, my graphics card got broke the other day. Well, not the other day, it was like half a year ago now. And, like, I tapped the box and it would just shut down the PC and. Yeah. It just happens. Um, oh, dear. I'll give him a rematch. He won in anyway. Musket Jr. Yeah, uh, showing I mean, some it... sportsmanship there, but is entitled to take the victory, I I believe so, unless uh, an admin decision is... I is think an, I mean, an admin decision here, a fair one, would be a rematch. I mean, mm. it's definitely in Blackstar's favour right it now. It is, but, you know, he's just hit up to the next stage and there's an army of doppel soldiers attacking yeah, him. Exactly. You know, it, it could, it's, it's, like, the outcome is, is... I don't know, something could happen with these units here. Certainly Blackstar would have to recover. He's not in an obviously one position yet, despite being favoured, but that is... Unfortunately, an anticlimactic ending to this uh, first game, though by the looks of it, Musket Jr. Uh, is happy to give him a rematch. Hopefully, though, Blackstar's uh, Black uh, graphics card won't conk out. Let's head on out of this one. Um, there's not really much to say here. The game didn't even finish. No, that's a kind of disappointing. I, I, hopefully, he can sort out his problems. Yeah. 
if they do play the game again, though, that gives us, now that we've had sort of some practice, <laughs> yeah. it's always that first five minutes with somebody casting for, like, even if you know them really well, like, that first game, that first five minutes is just getting in the flow of it. I think yeah. now we're there. Yeah, definitely. Mm. So what do I do? Do I exit Game Ranger? Yeah, I think you have to, because he was the host, um, we're going to have to re-host the game. Oh yeah, good point. I'm going to leave the scoreboard up because otherwise people will see my IP address and could DDoS me. <laughs> which I was uh, actually very concerned about before the game started. Fortunately it didn't happen though, and if it was going to happen they probably would have print screened it. Plus, uh, hope, I like to think our community is... Yeah, I wouldn't have thought people would want to DDoS the people trying to yeah. help the community. It's true, we're not really big enough to have mindless idiots. <laughs> well, having said that, there are a few mindless idiots. But... <laughs> There's always a few wherever you are. But they do have a passion for the game. Yeah. So not even them. Alright, so let's switch on over to uh, back to this thing. Right, we got Garfield in here. Alright, Garfield. Let's get this game started. Sub in for Black Star. <laughs> Garfield takes Musket <laughs> Jr. Three, five games to zero. Yep. Or oh, is it best of seven, right? So it is first of five. First of four. Yeah. First of four. I was going to say that would be a long old series, that would be. Mm. Did you see any of my speed run? I saw bits of it. I was working whilst you were doing it, so oh, I right. couldn't really watch. I saw you um, getting owned by a fire ship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> that was quite amusing. It brings up memories watching that. I can remember trying that campaign like years and years ago. Yeah. When I first did it the other day, I found it like... Yeah, I can remember actually struggling on those campaigns. quite funny. I remember, like, I just remember sitting, like, I'd go to my granddad's, and he was, he was like, he had, look, um, uh, he had a pretty good computer back in the day, and I ran, like, Age of Empires 3 on it, because my computer at home, I got it for Christmas, Age of Empires 3, but it wouldn't work on my computer, so I took it to my granddad's and yeah. played it there, and I, after dinner, I'd sit in the back, <laughs> in his back room, like, playing the campaign, and I just remember, like, taking hours to get these missions done. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, like, now I'm, like, speedrunning, like, some of these missions in two minutes, and I'm just... <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. I can't wait to get the speed run down. I'm really looking forward to setting that time. What's uh, what's the record at the moment? Uh, the record at the moment is like an hour and a half, but that was done on easy. Uh, right, the, okay. Because obviously it would be easier. Uh, there is no record that I'm aware of set on Expert outside of the one I set, which was two hours and something. I can't remember what it was. It was actually pretty quick. Okay. Uh, didn't uh, that Eddie Holland do pretty well? Or was um, that the easy one? I think he did it all. I think he did Act 1, whereas I'm doing Act 1, 2, and 3. Ah, okay. ESO, is that up yet? I wonder. Hmm, doesn't really affect us. We're going to use Game Ranger unless it does suddenly come back online. Just waiting for Blackstar to come out back. He's on Skype. Robbie, he says his video card is uh, screwed. Hmm. Otherwise, yeah, we might have to reschedule this match. Uh, which isn't really a problem. I mean, it's annoying because I've been streaming all day and build up to this. Though, to be fair, I would have done that anyway, whether this was going to actually happen. Um, yeah, that is a bit annoying. Uh, but, you know, in terms of, like, rescheduling, we don't have the other... I'll just say, well, the other semi. can't um, he can't do it next week because he's away for 12 days so we'd have to postpone the entire tournament which seems really silly 
If it doesn't work today, I'll try tomorrow. I uh, may not be available tomorrow. Um, I'll be available in the evening tomorrow. Probably after after about four or five o'clock, I'll be home. Hmm. Black Star's back. Uh, when do you leave? Uh, by the way, if I don't reply to your Game Ranger messages, that is because I'm not reading them. They're just <laughs> piling up in a tab <laughs> that's not on my it's on my other on my other monitor. But I'll probably look at them all afterwards. He leaves on Sunday. Increase stream quality. Yes, I shall do that. I forgot to do that. Alright, so it looks like we're going to try again. By the looks of it. So, um, someone has just told me on Skype that the official ruling is the player who drops, regardless of the position, lo auto loses the game. Unless and, the and other player states otherwise, I guess. Well, apparently the ruling is there is that like, it's not up to the players. It's an, it's an admin, like, there's no overruling it. Mm, I wouldn't stick too closely to those. Yeah, I mean that seems like a pretty ridiculous rule to me. Yeah, well, I I, I guess it's there because it, does, it if it's not there, it forces the other player who you know would get the admin win otherwise to, you know, if they don't say, oh yeah, we can have a rematch, then the community's going to be like, lol, this guy just wanted a free win, ha ha ha. You know, I don't really want to put people in that position, so I understand why that rule's in place, but. Um, well, let's hope that it improves this game. It's, uh, it's going to be interesting seeing a rematch. Are you ready? Yeah, so both players, like, they kind of know how each other's going to play the matchup now. So this makes it even more interesting. It does. They may elect to play it differently, though. Uh, yeah. But they have seen... Uh, though... Oh, thank God my IP is not on display. <laughs> God, I can see it, but it's covered up by the scoreboard. I'm just going to quickly play the stream back. Wow, we have 227 people watching this. Yeah, it's a big game, this one. Yeah, it is. <coughs> I think uh, Musket's definitely playing quite well recently. Yeah, he has been. Certainly been practicing a lot for this one. Yeah, I mean, I've been playing quite a lot of games with him during the week. Um, trying to sort of get him up to scratch uh, to make this a good game. Oh, I see. Well, you certainly are uh, a player and a half. <laughs> yeah, um, well I had to, de so me and, me and Maito had to delay our game as well. Um, we were going to play this after this game this evening, but it turns out he, he wouldn't have had it. enough time and uh, he's got to work, yeah. Damn it. He got the, uh, I believe, next Saturday, right? Yeah, so we got, that's like the, because we're so, so far away and he works sort of strange hours, um, it's so hard to get the game in. So the only, the next available time is next Saturday. Which I guess is not bad, because it's always better to stream on a Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do 
get your mum to stand next to it and blow into it. Samwise 12, filled yeah. with useful tips. You're welcome. That's some IT support right there. Mm-hmm. You work for it. Yes. <laughs> for, mm -hmm. for a PC shop. Uh, well, I don't know what, maybe it's a big chain. I have no idea what it is you do, but... Yeah, it's kind of rocket your, chain. Yeah. Your, your profession is computers <laughs> at the moment. Yeah, you wouldn't know. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Summer Championships quarterfinals. This is attempt number two. Currently, Blackstar OP, by the looks of it, having some trouble with this graphics card. Uh, things like that can happen. Not so long ago, my graphics card went bust, and every time I opened AOE 3 for more than 30 seconds, it would just overheat and die, and that would be that. Uh, by the looks of it, Blackstar having similar problems. Turned all his graphics down and done everything he can. I believe he's got a desk fan blowing into his PC or something like that. Uh, so we'll have to see how this goes. We're replaying this matchup. Uh, Musket Jr. and uh, Blackstar just playing this same map, these same sieves, on this same game number one. Uh, going in again for an attempt to Musket Jr. Giving him the rematch. Uh, just to give you a quick over overview, Blackstar seemed to be in the lead, but it was by no means decided. Uh, so we will have to see what the outcome of this is. Good sportsmanship from Musket Jr. Uh, the community is uh, thankful to him for, you know, seeing, seeing games replay. This is a big series. Uh, Blackstar and Musket, two very, very big names. Let's start with Blackstar OP. Here we have him in the uh, right-hand side of the map in the color red. Uh, this time, collecting up his 30 coin right away, not rushing to the trading route uh, to build it. Or perhaps he has tested this matchup and knows he can grab that coin treasure or something like that before uh, he, he lays down that first trading post. But obviously, not rushing to it directly, picking up these coin treasures. May lay down a market, we'll have to see uh, what he has in mind. Uh, Musket Jr. though, by the looks of it, <laughs> going to pick up yeah, his 90. The 95 word. He has, takes a crack. And then uh, he's going to let that recharge whilst he builds this trading post. Hopefully he doesn't miss the TPXP then, because obviously getting those three settler wagons out that much quicker is very influential. But both players actually going to lay down the trading post. I'll have to see, though, if uh, if he can get away with it, having picked up those two treasures. But Blackstar, as I mentioned previously, for those of you watching, uh, uh, who perhaps tuned in late or watching this as a VOD, Blackstar OP, the winner of the previous Spring Championships, the ESOC uh, Championships. The reigning champion, possibly the best player in the game, certainly has uh, the bragging rights to that title, having defeated H2O in a best of seven series or something like that in the previous one. Uh, but Musket Jr., no scrub, certainly a strong player, and uh, is you know been around since the beginning. Uh, seems fine by the looks of it. Graphics card seems fine for the time being. Let's hope it stays that way. Yes, yeah, Musket Jr. I, I really that. hope I really hope that it doesn't doesn't affect it. Yeah, I absolutely agree. It's a big series this, two two very big, game. big games. I know Musket Jr. has been around you know for a long time. Very, very strong player. Well versed with ev well, very like lots of civilizations. You see him playing Dutch and Portuguese, knows the game inside out and is certainly a worthy opponent for uh, Blackstar here and I believe has been doing his homework, has been uh, uh, been, been playing with members of the community to you know get ready for this tournament. Uh, his previous tournament experiences do not necessarily uh, reflect on uh, his sort of uh, where we are now. I don't think he took the, the last one particularly seriously. But no, what, you, what have you been yeah. noticing? Yeah, so um, Musket's definitely taking this more seriously. He definitely wants to win this match. He's been practicing a lot. Whereas Blackstar, on the other hand, mm. hasn't hasn't really played much in the last last week or so. So uh, I think if if now is if, if, if it ever now is a time that you could beat him, I think. I think it might be. And this is a good way to start beating him. Look at this. 150 coin. I'm not entirely sure Blackstar is aware that his opponent is nearby. Oh. Does crack shot the wolf, but it's low HP. Takes oh. one more hit and he'll be able to grab whoever grabs the treasure. Looks like he must nice. get... Does go win. For the last shot there, I'm not sure if Blackstar uh, necessarily knew that Explorer was there, but Musket Jr. picking himself up 150 coin. Uh, by the way, did you work out if both players managed to get their first batch of XP? No, so uh, Musket didn't get the XP, whereas Blackstar did. Oh. And you can, s although I, it looks like it didn't actually matter. It was, it was like late enough that they both got their shipment at the same time anyway. Mm, that's true. Though having said that, that trading route Travois is about to go past Blackstar and uh, that's going to launch him ahead in terms of XP. But by the looks of it, both players, I think, not getting it up early enough to actually have it affect their very first shipment. Um, it has, the, you know, both of those arriving at the same time and that's, you know, the important thing here. Two settler wagons is an insane shipment. 
Uh, but let's see when this goes past exactly how much XP ahead Black Star is over Musket. 35% uh, there, but obviously yeah, that so would be that's one, when it goes Yeah, one again. pass on the trade route ahead, but that's not going to be a big factor, honestly. No, maybe it's 5-10 seconds in terms of getting a shipment out, which obviously uh, might be an advantage if you need those 5-10 seconds and you can take a fight immediately as it arrives if your opponent's in, in your base or something, but uh, the effect is marginal. We've got an explorer fight? No, doesn't notice. No. So not. Blackstar did just pick himself up the 80 wood, which uh, with his 60 wood kind of closes the gap in the treasure fight. Yeah. Um, losing that 150 coin isn't as big of a deal anymore. 30 coin as well. Uh huh. Alright, so both players are heading on up to the next stage. Uh, both players have now got their markets uh, during transition. We'll be c gathering the resources they want for, of course, the uh, Colonial Age upgrades. We'll have to see how they play this matchup out then. In the previous game, uh, Musket Jr. started with, a, of course, that, that market instead of a trading post. Uh, and, you know, perhaps... Oh, here we go. Can he pick up 75 food as well? Musket Jr., you <laughs> cheeky bastard. Here we go. Is he going to get it? <laughs> oh, <He's gonna> get <laughs> oh, dear. Boys, this is a good start for Musket and Blackstar. I mean, he does get the XP, but you know, feeling you know, get, feels bad, man. All right, so Blackstar going with the stable starters again, and Musket has realised his uh, his last build didn't work too well, and has adapted. Yeah, he's adapted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in the previous game, you know, maybe he just you know went to the same trading post as Blackstar and just thought, oh, okay, there's no point in me getting this. I'll just get a trading post during transition. Maybe that yeah. was why he went for that build. I don't know. This game, though, both players doing similar things. Musket does seem to have changed, as, as we've just said. We'll have to see uh, how this you know sort of affects the rest of the game. But both players, you know, got their steel traps. In, and in fairly early, and must get weaving in the great coats upgrade as well. Certainly, uh, good, a good be... upgrade in a German mirror, that's for sure. Hmm, Ulan's having crazy hand attack, and uh, you know that's the if that's the extra one hit that you you know to survive a villager and into the town center yeah. on multiple villagers, perhaps definitely if your economy Damn is better right. because of I that. I didn't realize settler wagons have 400 HP with that with that uh, tech. It's <laughs> pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, I guess they have so many base hit points, it affects them more. That is yeah, loads. Exactly. Wow. <laughs> but uh, they, they do have range resist, so uh, the Ulans will still do pretty decent damage to them. Um, right, so, yeah, so as I said, Musket has realized his forward Rax play didn't work last game. Um, looks like he's going to go for a semi here. 700 coin coming out for Musket, and 700 wood for Blackstar. Oh. Didn't quite get the veal, he's going to lose his two lands. But I imagine that, uh, so Musket is going to be clicking up quite soon. He's got the 1k coin, just needs a couple hundred more food and he's up. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Hey, just uh, had a family interruption, so I needed <laughs> okay. my microphone and let you lead. Uh, but I have returned. And I've uh, been invited to the beach tomorrow, which is not the most useful thing to know right now. But uh, we do have plenty of Ulans now going to siege down this trading post here. Of course, cavalry quite good at killing villagers, uh, not so good at sieging. They do have a much, much lower siege attack compared to their hand attack here. But uh, by the looks of it, you know, is actually doing considerable amount of damage to that trading post. And uh, there's not, a, you know, a very interesting response from uh, from from Musket. Well, Mus Musket is 40% uh, of the way up to a tree right now. He um, is. Yeah. He, but his problem is he's he's quite low on wood. He's going to be housed, and he's hasn't sent the 700 wood, so he has a shipment ready to send. Mm. Do you think he's sent it perhaps just a little bit late, or is he? Uh, hoping no, to... I mean, I mean, hope, I mean, at this point, I guess it's worth just waiting for the 1k wood in H3, possibly. Yeah. All right. Um, so Musket up to the next stage. You know, that much faster than uh, Blackstar here, uh, as a result of sending 700 coin. Uh, instead of 700 wood, I imagine these two shipments would be swapped around. 700 wood first from Blackstar, followed by coin. But you know, actually, perhaps not going to send 700 wood at all. Maybe just send the 1,000 wood, uh, which is of course more efficient. But as a result of you know having having done that and getting up, uh, had, did not train, I, I guess, as many cav in transition and lost his trading post. And now Blackstar ahead in terms of XP, and uh, he's going to be pretty happy about that. Yeah, it's, I mean, Blackstar's still in a good position here. I mean, he's taken up the TP, and he's not going to get punished because of the size of the map. But yeah. by the time that Musket is in his base, he's going to be age 3 as well. So it, it shouldn't be a problem for him. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Musket, though, nine Ulans have just arrived. 
uh, is definitely close to overpopping. I cannot see how he's going to fit very many units in queue at all. Does have one war wagon in queue. They do take a very long time to train, so he's got plenty of time to get the houses down before he queues the rest of them up there. But, uh, you know, he is de at this point, has a military lead, does Musket, despite losing his trading post. Perhaps, though, can even that up here, because, of course, you know, eight Olans arriving, or nine, is it? Uh, you know, that's a big amount. That's a, that's a large quantity of, of units, and uh, yes. is actually going to take this trading post out, and is perhaps now an entire shipment ahead in terms of tempo, you know, a whole 30 seconds, because he sneaked the age up in that much sooner, and that could right. be really, really influential. So there's something interesting happening here. Right. Musket, uh, Musket is really out of position. He is. And Blackstar has his vet Ulans just about to finish, and they have about the same number of Ulans, so... This is definitely going to turn out pretty bad for him, I'd say. It is, he's coming in now, perhaps uh, can find a villager to kill, though five oh, war wagons. wagons do pop out, and of course, uh, war wagons, not the best unit uh, in AoE 3, but definitely they are a hard counter to war wagons here, and Blackstar going to have to get out of there. Uh, this tempo advantage, you know, coming back into play since the war wagons have now finished here, and actually able to take out the trading post and deflect this raid despite being out of position, as you mentioned. Nicely done from Musket Jr. here. Uh, unit composition, an interesting one, uh, but working here. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that uh, Blackstar started training skirms, so uh, like blindly training skirms, that's unlike him, I'd say. He's always also, he's always more of like an adaptive player, he, he's a reactive player, sorry. Yeah. Whereas this game, he, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't opt to make skirms in a German mirror any day. Mm. Uh, now the Vet Ulans are coming in for Musket, and he's going to be in a really good position. And you have to bear in mind, he's, he is one military shipment ahead in H3 at the moment. Yeah, so and when that arrives, you know, that's that's going to spell go time, yeah. and uh, Blackstar's going to be, you know, on a 30-second clock before his one arrives. Uh, skirmishes, though, what do you think of the choice here? Do, do you think it was sort of guesswork? It, surely you don't expect your opponent to make um, war, wagons. war wagons, which I guess they do count. I mean, I, I, I mean, I think war wagons are pretty good in this, this matchup. Mm. Obviously, skirms do beat them quite hard, seeing as they have no no range resist. But oh, this is going to be really bad for Blackstar here. This yeah. could be game. This could, could be. be game. This is the tempo swing, right? You know that extra shipment is sort of coming into play here. There's those eight skirmishers on top of this fight. Lots of Ulans with the war wagons in the back, dishing out 42 times three versus the Ulans here, which means the red ones are going to fall that much quicker. And uh, you know, blue is, is Cyan going to be able to tear through here? Let's take a look at the military tab and see the outcome of the fight. So Musket is definitely winning this fight. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the Ulans couldn't really do much. There was a big wall of cav in the way. Uh, I think, you know, Blackstar wanted to send his Ulans against the uh, war wagons and, you know, sort of focus them down real quick. Well, and the skirmishes as well. But that big wall of uh, cavalry stopping it from doing that. Although I think Musket wants to get out of here now. I mean, five Ulans going to clean his army up. He wants to be a bit careful. Mm. If they do pop out five veteran Ulan, uh, yeah, definitely hard yes. count of the skirms. Although, all saying that, it's actually war wagons in queue for Blackstar. Is there? Interesting. Oh, wow. And there's no. Oh, uh, here comes the nine, nine Ulan shipment. Oh, dear. Has he overstayed his welcome? Oh, Possibly. God. There's, a, there's a lot of stuff coming here, though. Yeah, he's got, you know, he's got his army on the way, but, it, you know, if he, it's just a little bit too late. If he'd not. Uh, he, he's been a little bit too greedy, forcing all these villagers off the coin, which is good, but, uh, you know, ha you have to anticipate your opponent sending a shipment, and you know you're weak to Cavs since you've only got one left here. If these had gone back just a little bit sooner, they would be uh, within sort of the range of protection of these war wagons and these other cab here, but actually not, does lose all of his skirmishes here, and I think, you know, Blackstar uh, might have evened up sort of the advantage that had been lost, well, Musket Jr.'s advantage may have been evened up because of that. Yeah, I mean, he's still in a good position, though. The, 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 the uh, a big war wagon batch coming in. Yeah, absolutely. That was the sh yeah, but imagine if he had eight skirms here. These two war wagons from Blackstar, completely useless. Uh, yep. But but Musket's still able to force these villagers off goal, and Blackstar is still definitely going to have to be forced to respond. Let's see. Oh, these villagers up here are vulnerable. Yeah, food. this could be game. This it is could be. be. Game. If he can't gather food, and if he can't gather coin, he cannot make units here. And the slight tempo lead uh, from Musket Jr. looks like he was able to win that fight in convincing fashion. And then just because he was an extra shipment ahead or, or managed to gain some sort of tempo, keep his, his opponent off resources and just snowball it into a win. Yep, really well played. That's the uh, the saving like saving the shipment in age two actually paying off there. Yeah, just definitely. Be being that one military shipment ahead was the difference. Yeah, and I thought, you know, early on when uh, he wasn't able to defend that trading post, yeah. that uh, you know that was that was really really going to be tough if you're a shipment like an entire trading post down in the fortress age like your opponent has that trading post 
you know, you, you, you're in a yeah. bad spot there, even if you are up a bit sooner. Uh, yeah. But does manage to get the other trading post there. Perhaps Blackstar could have, you know, more adequately defended that. Uh, yeah. Possibly. So, I mean, I was going to mention. So, the the turning point in this game mm. was when Musket went to siege the TP in the bottom. That should have been, that that in my eyes that was a bad move. He just left his entire base completely open to raids. But Blackstar was a bit indecisive about what he wanted to do with his Ulans, and because of that, ended up getting them all caught and through his advantage. Yeah, that's true. Did um, lose a lot of Ulans there uh, when the war wagons yeah. popped out. Yeah, it was a nice. Oh, it's a good good war wagon pop that really saved saved the day there. Yeah. Right. Uh, you're saying if he'd been in a bit sooner, maybe he would have got some vills then. Yeah, exactly. He could have at least belled him up and then got out of there, but because yeah. he waited so long. And obviously, if he's then out of there, those war wagons would have been perhaps as u not as useful. Uh, definitely a few things uh, to consider there in this first game, but Musket Jr. does take the win, and uh, well played to him. Certainly has been practicing and is taking this tournament a lot more seriously, and I think you have to at this point when you're up against Blackstar OP. This is a best of seven series, though. Uh, therefore, uh, first of four wins. This is very, very early on in the series right now. Let's see, uh, let's head on out into the next game. Yep, so <clears throat> next map is Arkansas. Interesting. So I'm in the game at the moment. Blackstar has taken Japan, going back to the roots. All right, Japan. Blackstar has selected, of course. Neither player can play as Germany. Blackstar clicking in as Japan. Uh, Musket Junior happy to play France in against uh, Blackstar's Japan. I'm gonna click in here. Game number two, guys, coming up right now. Our players are ready. Interesting civilization choices. I think yeah, Musket, you know, picking a civ that fares well against France. Uh, sorry, against Japan, but not taking the mirror matchup. Uh, obviously, Blackstar is a very good player mechanically, and in a mirror, me being good mechanically, you know, sort of those uh, micro uh, and all of the sort of, you know, small, intricate things about the game. Hey, if yeah. it's a mirror matchup, <clears throat> certainly. It could be tough to play against Blackstar, especially, you know, Blackstar being one of the players who has innovated some of the newer builds with Japan, sort of being able to get up to industrial. And... <laughs> yeah. Anyway, here we are. Uh, let's take a look at what they have in store. Uh, looks like here, though. It is a wood start, so Japan is going to be pretty happy uh, right about now. It means he's going to get up a little bit faster if, uh, if there was a coin start. And because well, of on that, on the other hand, uh, the French could potentially get the TP, which is also good for them. Certainly true. Things to consider here. So. Uh, oh, we've got the bass wood down here as well. Ninety-five wood, and it looks like he's going to see that right that. away. Looks like is he heading straight for a trading post? And I know I would in this situation. Going to come across the bass wood. Is he going to take a crack at that and then go build his TP and then come back and crack the shot the other guy? Looks like that's exactly what he's going to do. Or perhaps just straight up take the treasure here yeah, and I, I would, not I would have take to gather it, the wood. So interesting, Black Star has got both explorers together on the top side. Hmm. It's a bit different to the usual sort of scouting pattern on this map. Yeah, I know there's a lot of big treasures in that spawn sort of up this side, uh, but you know, having seen, is that true though? I mean, you know, it's 80 food near the trade route, 90 wolf hive wood there. Yep, okay. and a settler as well. Yeah, so perhaps uh, curious. But 95 wood gonna be really, really good for Musket here. Yeah, He's gonna lay down that house, and as a result of finding the treasure, does not have to gather wood, which is effectively more food gather time, uh, because you know doesn't have to collect for the house. Gonna be up a bit much quicker, uh, that much quicker, be that bit a uh, little bit more competitive. And what is Blackstar up to? He's found himself uh, 40 coin, not not the best treasure in the world. Uh, but is there anything nearby that perhaps he uh, will have access to shortly? I mean, no, there's not really anything on that top side of the map. 135 no. XP is the best up there. Which is reasonable, but, you know, it's basically yeah. one pass of a trading route, which is... Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's good, but Japan for Japan, it's not really that big of a deal. No, I, mean, I guess you're yeah. looking for wood treasures and food treasures, really. Exactly. At this point in the game, at least. Uh, and keep it. Blackstar has... Uh, sorry, Bla uh, Musket has scouted the Settler treasure there along the bottom as well. Oh wow. So let's see if he goes yeah. towards that. Do you think uh, he's, he's too much lag? <clears throat> That's not good. It looks like uh, it's lagging quite a bit for Musket. Uh, sorry, for Blackstar because of his graphics card. Um, I'm, I'm sitting at between 50 and 60% uh, in terms of. Yeah, no, nothing unexpected for me. It's not me. It's not him. 
It's not me, because my FPS is above 60, and like... Yeah, I mean, it's... I don't think it's me. It's not... I don't usually no. lag. Well, we know it's Blackstar's graphics card. I think it's heating up a bit too much. Like, the first game it was okay, but now it's, uh... Okay, well, let's give it a go and see. Oh, this is, uh... This is bad. He's got his Explorer caught here. It does. Uh, being forced off the 80 food treasure there, France is going to grab that uh, quite nicely, quite easily. Uh, do you think Musket's going to be able to pick up as many treasures this game as he managed to steal from Blackstar last Yeah. Um, a, a big thing a, a thing to keep in mind right now is uh, Blackstar's definitely getting a bit frustrated with the situation here. Mm. Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to put him on tilt a bit. A bit of the man called tilt. Man called tilt. Yeah. Blackstar tilt. Ink. <laughs> Oh, it does catch the uh, explorer there? Is he gonna have to? Is he gonna get a divine strike on that pawny scout? <laughs> that Doesn't would have been quite, like. quite upsetting if that had happened for musket. That would be annoying. That extra scout really useful a lot of the time. Um, well, obviously you don't want to lose it. Does uh, get his explorers back, but actually doesn't get to pick up that food treasure, and uh, is you know gonna have less scouting information because he's sort of been forced to walk back to his opponent's or uh, well, to his own base. But. What is this? What are you expecting in this matchup then? At this, <laughs> well, certainly... I'm, I'm expecting one or two things really from the French player. Mm. I mean, he's it's either going to be some kind of a Expo Pike rush, or or a musket, uh, like a musket semi. I would say. Mm. I would say it's got to be one of the two. I don't really see any other options for them. Mm. I was toying with the idea of could you like fast fortress as France? I mean, you could, but. You could, but I mean, yeah. The one thing you don't want to do against Japan is give them time. Mm. Um, I think he almost has to put a little bit, little bit of pressure on either way early. Mm. Certainly, even though, even if it's just taking out a few shrines, like just yeah. see something to disrupt him. And I expect that that is exactly what we'll see. I mean, I'm very unlikely to see a fast fortress. Uh, it's just something oh. I had an idea with. Certainly, Ottoman and Spain uh, can pull that off against Japan, which is weak to sort of the timing pressure. What do we see here? So we've got the the scout has uh, seen the one three five XP. Oh. <laughs> that scout is gonna oh, die. Dear. He's got no poof this time. No, he's used his poof up. Looks like that's gonna go down there. Uh, bringing his uh, his other explorer in, uh, but trying to get oh, it. Oh wow, that's unfortunate. <laughs> he so he grouped his scouts together there and it oh. dragged the other one backwards. Oh no. <laughs> one three five XP does go to musket musket. Uh, treasure, treasure, treasure hunter indeed, a treasure sniper, uh, performing very well. Of course, has entire line of sight basically to the the entire map at this point because of his scout. That, that and when he rubbing, sees his opponent, that's just rubbing salt in the wound at this point. Mm. When you see that's your, real. yeah, when they're sort of having lag issues and you stole so many treasures from them last game, that that does but that does add up. But uh, oh, man, with access line of sight to the entire map, you know he's definitely going to be able to see when his opponent's going for treasures. And, that's just a sort of facet of playing from. So this is actually really, really good by Musket here. He's already killed one explorer, and he's hunting down the second. He's gonna stop him from like shrine booming. Yeah, if you have no it's explorers, really gonna definitely gonna be uh, pretty tough. Yeah, and so we're seeing a forward rax here. No vils on coin. It looks like a Musket, uh, an expo pike rush coming. Expo pike rush incoming. Yeah, and not that fast. Was coming up I was going to talk about. Yeah, Musket. Uh, sorry, yeah, Musket Junior. Uh, being a vanilla scrub, I, I expect him to be. Like, I'm not surprised that by his decision to play as as France, certainly a civ he's going to be very comfortable with. Certainly good as Japan too, but I think you know uh, because he originally played vanilla for so long, is is going to be perhaps more happy with playing as France. And France, a crossbow pike rush can be quite difficult for for France to sorry for Japan to deal with, having yeah. so many sort of high high efficiency units in your face early on, and of course. Uh, you know, Pike's very efficient at, at sieging, and Crossbow's uh, very efficient uh, in terms of damage output, at least uh, very early on. And of course, fueled by those those 700 and 600 wood shipments. This is, you know, a lot of units coming his way, uh, an aggressive build coming out of Musket Jr. here, and of course that's to be expected up against Japan. Yep, so 600 wood coming out first for the Japan player. He is complete, he's nearly completely walled off, which mm. is, uh, it's going to really help against this rush. It is definitely going to help. So I'm, I'm wondering if uh, Musket seeing this is going to sort of adapt to more of a semi-FF build off at the back of this. Mm. Um, or if he's just going to fully commit to this rush. We will see. Of course though, Five Pikes does come out as his first choice of military units. They are going to do some damage in terms of killing the shrines here. Uh, certainly it uh, wouldn't be wouldn't be wrong to, to switch into something Fortress, as, as you were saying. Could kill off all these shrines, but 
Uh, with this yeah. wall in the way, at least you force them to build a wall, and that's perhaps enough damage to their, their economy. So that looks exactly like what he's going to be doing here. He's uh, he's only making pikes, taking out the shrines. Got his four vills out. Now he's gathering up some coin. I'd imagine we're going to see 700 coin next and an age up. As his next shipment, yeah. Four vills coming out. Traditionally, the crossbow pikes uh, continued to be fueled by 600 wood. As the next shipment, as you f ram, as you would say, uh, ram <laughs> the crossbows and pikes down their throat. Uh, just, just gonna do a very, very light pressure here. Can still force his, you know, his opponent's villagers around, and tr you know, trying to do that with the small army he has, and of course, it uh, takes out lots of, lots of uh, houses or shrines, as, as they're called. Gonna get up to the next stage, and uh, gonna have a, sort of an agenda there. Yep, so there's the coin. He's going to be clicking up very shortly. This is uh, it's looking pretty good for him. Mm, so Take, Taken out already about three or four shrines as well. Yeah, night, lots of early game damage. You've got to keep Japan in check. And then uh, going to get up to, to Fortress. and so That definitely puts Japan uh, under pressure. A little bit of an early skirmish here. It does manage to take off a crossbowman. A little bit of damage going on that explorer as well, but he doesn't really want to get too close uh, in this fight. Though could just just head head on go into that, you know, with the explorer tanking, and you could put the pikes perhaps in stagger mode. But of course, uh, with the uh, sort of reinforcing five unis, he'd be expecting you w wouldn't really want to take these these five yeah. units. So so black thing. being black star in this position, I think he's clocked on that uh, musket is probably going to be aging. Uh, seeing as he he has stopped the pressure and he hasn't got me, he's seen all his his units. So. Yeah, he's just seen a couple of crossbowmen and and, a, and an explorer, and his opponent yeah. was like retreating uh, away from your just oh, your only five Yumi. Whereas you know if he had reinforcing units, would certainly continue to fight that. Uh, so he, he mo most likely is aware of what's going on here and will probably try and match him. Certainly, we see yeah. six hundred coin uh, now on, on the ground there. And he's going to yeah. be heading up to the Fortress Sage. So definitely something you need to to to, to, to anticipate. And, and Blackstar doing exactly that to remain competitive in this game. Yep, so he's, he is going to be aging up himself. But I'm just not sure if it's going to be a bit too late. Hmm. So we have... Uh... Ooh, lots of Yumi's here and the best Bestirios that he managed to get with his 400 export. Power spike for Japan here is like having an extra shipment out of nowhere. Yeah. Uh, uh, these, you know, managing to take out two crossbowmen, uh, though not a huge amount of damage, not getting trapped or, you know, forgetting that his units are there or anything silly like that that can happen, uh, but just defending his shrines at this point. So Musket has just uh, just sent, uh, he's just sent two cannons, I'm pretty sure. Ten pop in, in queue. Yeah, ten population slots used up. Two heavy cannons do arrive, and I imagine this would spell go time. Let's take a look at the uh, queue there. Musket Jr. does have uh, four Dragoons in queue, a fifth one most likely about to pop. And then, of course, uh, a couple skirmishes uh, that he was had in queue. I maybe delete them to get the dragoons in queue. That that yeah. could be it. There uh, certainly. This is now where. So here's the cannons. Yeah. This is this is gonna be tough for for Blackstar. Uh, only 50% aged, and these cannons gonna be on top of his base, perhaps pressuring you know his military building. Uh, fortunately, I, I, though, it's yeah. well defended, so maybe not. Uh, he's gonna be out of. What most... I would like to see him yeah. do is pressure that Toshigi shrine. That would be a really good thing to pick up here. Yeah, if you take that out, certainly uh, your opponent's economy potential drops drops drastically there. Uh, but the cannon's definitely going to kill something. And, uh, you know, I almost feel like this is, a bit, this is a bit of a waste of time, taking out these shrines. The shrines, yeah. I would have liked to have seen him go straight for the straight for the other shrine, the big shrine. Mm. But at the same time, do you think, uh, you know, he thinks, I've only got five dragoons out here, and... Yep. Uh, I th to be fair, these other five perhaps would have arrived just in time as he started sieging that to show you. Maybe there's a little playing pass, not sure what his opponent's got. Uh, you know, he's, he's probably expecting an age up, but if, I don't know, say his opponent's been scouting, uh, sorry, if his opponent's been staying colonial the entire time, could be massing or something like that. Obviously, very unlikely, but if that were the case, the two cannons could be punished and taken out there. Maybe he's just playing defensively, you know, safely. Uh, because yeah. maybe he didn't have the, the scouting information. Yeah, I mean, he's taking what he can. I guess it is the safe play. Yeah. It looks like he might pick this up anyway. He might. He's going to have to do something. Uh, he's certainly threatened the Dragoons away, but those two heavy cannons are doing, you know, 100 times two versus buildings, and that, that shrine is, is going down quickly. Uh, he's, he's, how do you deal with this as your Japan? I, I guess you have to send. Uh, he's got to send his flaming arrows. The ones of your own. Yeah, there they are. They have arrived. Certainly quite good against uh, Falconets oh, they, with their extra range. Yeah, they can. They can here, but you know, musket probably just going to get away from this. Yeah. I'll oh, get the one last shot. Ooh. Off. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> takes out the cannon there, and that is uh, that, that is you know pretty big for him. 
Uh, so yeah. it looks like, uh, you know, if he did go, if he ignored those two shrines, as you mentioned, could have taken out that Toshogu shrine. And of course, that I believe is a 10% bonus or something like that. And it supports yeah, it, 20 population. You know, that 20 is pop gone. and it busts all of your other shrines. And like. it is a shrine. And with that yeah. gone, yeah. It's a massive disadvantage. Uh, though having said that, you know, it is fairly weak and it is fairly expensive to repair in terms of... Actually, 400 food's not that bad to repair. Uh, the other thing as well, uh, killing that Toshigi shrine gives you a lot of XP as well. Yeah, well, let's take a look. 240 kill XP, it definitely does. Trying to snipe that would actually be really good, but at this point it's going to be quite tough. You take a lot of punishment uh, from all of these sort of y Yumi and, uh, and Ashies. And the two flaming arrows here. I think Musket in a good position here. Uh, sorry, I'm in Black Star in a good. I meant yeah, I meant to say Black Star. And Musket, oh, gonna be a little bit upset perhaps about not quite finishing that off. At this point though, uh, it looks like Musket is sorry. Black Star sort of stabilised uh, with a superior economy, I would imagine, due to the shrines. And now Musket really needs to make something happen. Uh, does have an extra military shipment on his opponent because he's been up a bit sooner. We'll have to see what he can do in this fight. Three Quirasiers mixed in. Let's switch over to the military tab there. Uh, the, there's only one cannon in the back and it is very weak. Uh, though the Flaming Arrow, very low as well. Both sets of cannons neutralized. And Quirasiers versus uh, Archers, you know, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's looking pretty good for Muska, huh? Yeah. Those five Ashigaras arriving just a little bit late. If they were in this fight the entire time, uh, maybe these cavalry would not have been able to do as nearly as much damage to all of these uh, these these Yumi archers, and perhaps as a result that would have you know more units here. Uh, looks like you know the tempo advantage is is working out for Musket and a sort of a well fight, a, a well taken fight, good micro. Uh, but but Black Star by no means out at this point. Uh, if if his economy can kick in. Yeah, so one, one thing though, uh, Black Star is about to run out of his cherry orchard. And uh, he's, he has. Has he got a shipment? I'm not sure if he's got a shipment. He um, just sent the 8 Ashi not long ago. He I just sent about 40 seconds ago. I think he must have one because it's on 6%. Yeah, so that's it, true. He must have only just sent it. It must be in queue, something like that on its way. Yeah, sent eight Ashies that has arrived. So he's managed to bounce back here, but you know, his opponent's got the superior. Composition. Uh, skirmish is certainly very good against Ashes here, and these two shrines on the front going to go down. That that Toshogu shrine still very weak. 474 hit points has not repaired that there, and you know it's going to be tough to you know spend 400 food repairing it uh, when you're, you're needing to make military units to, to stabilize. Two cherry orchards do arrive as well, and of course that puts him another shipment behind in terms of sort of tempo here, uh, because of course you need a food source and you can't get away with not sending that. Ooh. It does go down. Have we lost Samwise 12? No, no, sorry. I am. Wait, am I, am I muted? No, no. You're, you're good. Okay, sorry. Sorry, I was uh, daydreaming. You were, you were thinking. Yeah. I was just admiring the play. Mm. 1000 uh, wood from Musket, though. Uh, a nice boomy card in the back behind this. Perhaps going to lay down some town centers with that or more, more infrastructure. Could get the trading post route. Uh, at this point, he's got his opponent uh, contained up, uh, though fortunately, uh, with the Cherry Orchards in the back, Black Star, you know, this sort of map control isn't hugely relevant since he's able to gather food still, and uh, you can, I think he's got all his, yeah, he has got all of yeah, his Yeah, so he's also dropped point. a castle in the back, and he's got out two more Flaming Arrows. So that's definitely going to be good against these guys, it's especially be, with this yeah. sort of wall. It's pretty hard to push into them to kill mm. them, but like, he's not going to get through there. Yeah, there's no way to get to them out other than this little passage here, which of course yeah. the Ashes have got blocked off. Uh, you could go around the back near the trees, sort of around here, but I'm sure you know he'll see that with his market and his, and his walls if you send dragoons around there. It's going to be tough to get to those flaming arrows, definitely. The uh, thing is though, does does Blackstar really have enough coin? Uh, I mean, he's got his shrines on coin, but without yeah, the Shogu shrine and no coin mines, uh, it could you know the only resource you can really gather is food and wood for the time being. Right, so Musket has dropped an artillery foundry and has a falconet in queue as well. Let's take a look at the queue there. Oh wow, and that is definitely the right thing to do at this point. Uh, you know, it's going to, you know, perhaps and well, certainly he's going to be seeing those those two flaming arrows now, and, and cannons going to be really effective at countering those. And also cannons, exactly what he needs to push through these walls into his opponent's, you know, sort of soft underbelly. <laughs> yep. Uh, another thing, uh, Musket has dropped to uh, Arsenal, and he's already got the extra range on his dragoons. And I imagine it'd probably be getting counter infantry rifling as well. Let's take a look at the improvements. Yeah, these are some. Uh... They get where is? His... Wait, which one? It's the second. Uh, the the last upgrade that Musket's done gives his dragoons two oh, more range. range cavalry. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, skirmishes in. Uh, sorry, not skirmishes. Culverins. 
Yep. Good, uh, perhaps like, you know, cancels the falconet when he sees his opponent's got flaming errors for a unit that even you know hard counters the. Uh... I would like to see him engage this. Like he's got more than enough dragoons. I to think deal so with too, but maybe just waiting for you know that cauldron to pop out. Perhaps it's almost ready. There uh, it is. Yeah, there it is. He's gonna have to do something right now. Then uh, that's exactly what he was waiting for, and exactly what he needs to to, to oh, deal well to with the flaming. Bills. He does, but at least he protects his barracks from going down. Ooh, nice volley there against the skirms, doing lots of damage. I'm gonna hold the alt bar so we can see exactly what's going on here. Uh, definitely a superior unit counts go to the military tab. There's so many units from from, from muscular. These skirmishers yep. gonna clean up those uh, ashes quite quickly. And Culverins the, uh... are one-shotting flaming arrows as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and these flaming arrows, you know, the only thing really good against the skirmishes, and, and they're now nullified by that, that culverin. Just the one culverin, not going mad, not training like 50 culverin. You know, yeah, sometimes really you like do that. Idea. You want to like, maximize, uh, train five units, I'll make five culverins. No, not going to waste his resources on more than one culverin. It's all he needs, he knows that. Oh, never mind. Never mind, he's trained two more. <laughs> oh, wow, well, okay. I would have liked to see them being Falconets. Yeah. So he's quite low on the skirm count as well. Um. He is, and as a result of that, these Ash, he's now going to come in and punish the Culverins there. Uh, he is going to get out, though. He knows he doesn't want to stay too long, versus, I mean, Dragoon's still quite punishing if you're focusing, you know, effectively nothing because the, the Culverin's soaking with the damage. It does pick up a villager kill, nicely done. It looks like Black Stars managed to stabilize. If those were Falconets, imagine what the, the the sort of pressure potential Muscular yeah. have. I mean, he has stabilized, but he still is 50 score behind. Mm. The advantage of having the Culverins, though, is that it sh entirely shuts down Flaming Arrows. Yeah, there's, exactly. there's truly no point making those now. I'm going to have to make sort of Ashy Garrows. Sorry, and, and Yumi Archers, and, and, you know, if he gets his skirmish account back up, uh, Musket going to be able to contain his opponent here. Yeah, this is a guess. Yeah, it's all of a sudden swung back into its favour. Mm. But it has stabilised um, for the time being, and Blackstar, one hell of an economy, 51 villagers uh, with the shrines behind it, though, of course, not not the Toshogi Shrine, not as good as perhaps uh, they ought to be. I'm going to bring up my calculator and do the 38 times. <laughs> calculator hype. It is... Uh, 47.5, so perhaps not that far ahead after all. Alright, so there's another four flaming arrows just popped out. Oh wow. And finally we got the we got the Falks in queue now. Falconets in queue. Now, these culverins you know, ended up being pretty good. I mean if if a good if you only had the one culverin, uh, the yeah. flaming arrows could snipe it or if that that culverin does get sniped. It's got four HP, so yeah. Uh... That could be tough. Uh, so maybe adding in the culverins is good. I mean, in that in that particular spot, the falconets look really good, but you know they have still arrived on time for the push. Yeah. So musket perhaps uh, knowing what he's doing here exactly. Mm, oh dear! Oh, flaming six arrows. Two down. Yeah, and that's not good. That's, the flaming arrows are on, the only thing threatening these skirmishes. They are the only thing that is making Blackstar able to take this fight right now because, of course, uh, he. Up against skirmishes with the muskets, not good. Flaming arrows justifying that, but now they are gone as a result of the culverins. The uh, the falconets turn up, and as you can see, uh, the falconets on top of all the military that is here. Musket Junior taking a convincing win. A nice contain. Yeah, well played. Well, not necess not really a contain. That's not what I really meant, but, but certainly. I mean, uh, it kind of was a contain, but it was kind of Blackstar containing himself as well with the walls. Hmm. I mean, he wasn't able to gather coin for a, re a very long time. Mm. I would have, I, I expected to see him sneak a few bills out to the side and get on one of them far coin mines. <laughs> yeah, I, that losing that to Shugu Shrine was a was a big deal. It really hurts the economy. Yeah. Wow, well, that was a. Uh... God, he was so close to stabilizing as well. What, yeah, what went okay. wrong after? Like, I mean, he, he managed to keep it alive with 400 HP. Uh, what happened from there? I, I honestly think he just had the wrong unit composition. I don't think Ashy Flaming Arrow is the, is the right way to play. I think he almost has to make some Yumi here. I mean, Yumi is going to beat the Skirms and the Dragoons. Um, I, I w what I would have liked to have seen was probably just a, a nag like a naggy Yumi Ashy composition. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but well, well played by Musket though. Well played. Going with the Flaming Arrows does Black Star certainly very, a good unit, a, but yeah, hard It's a very good adaption as well. Like he was, he had the rush. Like it looked like he was going to go for an all-in rush. 
Yeah. Saw the balls and changed changed the way he was going to play the matchup. Changed his mind. I mean, you, you forced your opponent to make less shrines anyway because the wall is there. At least the presence of it, you know, is good enough. Maybe he has to add in a gate as well. Those are damn expensive. And uh, it does goes to Fortress Age, and, and and as a result, is still able to timing push Japan, uh, which is what they don't like. And nicely done. Yeah, well played. Um, well so played. I'm not sure what's going on here. Black Star cancelled the game. Alright, I'm gonna head on out and get back into the next one hopefully in just a moment, but uh, Yeah, have a quick chat with Black Star. Let's see what's I'm going just gonna on. grab a drink quick. All right. Right back.